literally everything flows from the upper cervical uh, complex. And the reason for that is because, uh, again, everything in the examination is, uh, is aimed and derived from the dural tension situation. That's what it's all about. So we get hold of, uh, of our friend John here and laterally flex and laterally flex. And what we've got there is, is a, a reduction in lateral flexion to both sides. So we have a bilateral lateral flexion. The next step is to go to the condyles and their hypermobile, <coughs> which is a common finding. And axis will produce that, but not this time. His axis is actually fairly mobile as well. So he step behind the patient and turn him around like so. He goes all the way around to, the, to that side and all the way around to that side. So the only finding that John has is a, is a lateral flexion problem um, at the upper cervical complex. Now, we know that is the compensation pattern for an upper limb. So he goes straight into the upper limb and we have to examine the upper limb in exactly the way you're told not to do it. Um, <clears throat> we're going to put the hand out like that so it's in the XY plane and lift it in the XY plane. Oops. And that's where it comes to. Now you see what he wanted to do? He wanted to get it out there so he could get it up. But you've got to keep it in that XY plane and bring it straight up and that's where it's blocked. We go to the other side and up she comes. So despite the fact this is a bilateral loss, it's a unilateral problem. Um, we're now going to get the reflex hammer and look for the neuropathology, go to the Shimizu reflex, which we'll explain to you in detail later. And there's no reflex. Because there's no reflex, it now <coughs> means that we don't have a problem at the shoulder. Despite the fact that we've got a big loss of movement here at the shoulder, we don't have a, a shoulder problem. We've actually got a problem somewhere lower down, so it's either elbow. Uh, or down in the wrist or hand or fingers. 